All right, Monty, who do you pick to win this one? Historic powerhouses right here. I, I got to pick the Boros Cycling deck. I, niv Mizzet is great when it gets going, when you have all five colors of mana and you get to niv Mizzet. But if you don't have one of those Tyrant Scorns, if you're not ready and they catch you off guard, you're in trouble. And Hollow One, really good in this matchup. Let's get things underway here with a Sevai Triumph for Piotr Lugoski on the play. Passes the turn to Heavy Dominguez, who draws a go for blood. So certainly able to get the cyclers off and running. And as you mentioned in the last cycling match, we saw able to dispatch two one-drop threats. The next turn, Flameblade Adept as well as Flourishing Fox being able to deliver some big old chunks of damage in this matchup. Yeah, this is the same list that we saw in the hands of Luis Salvato earlier. This team tested together and settled on this list of Boros Cycling, the only team to really bring this deck here in Historic. And we saw Luis, against our expectations, just more or less crush Andrea's midrange deck. And this Niv 5 color Niv Mizza deck is, in some ways, just a more greedy version of a midrange deck. So things off to a relatively decent-ish start for both players as Binding the Old Gods is able to take care of one of these threats. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, which of these critters gotta go? And it is the fox that's gonna get out of here. There was a moment of consideration from Pyotr there. Part of that is because this Boros deck only plays three Flameblade Adepts, but the full four Flourishing Foxes. So when mm -hmm. looking at this copy of Maelstrom Pulse in his hand, Pyotr was thinking, which one is more likely for me to get a two-for-one farm? And actually, the answer, surprisingly, ends up being Flameblade Adept. But the <laughs> reason he gave a moment's pause there was because he was thinking, do I leave the fox alive, which is technically more threatening threatening as it gets permanent counters that grow over time, or do I leave the Adept, which I'm less likely to get a two-for-one from? So Piotr wanting to get rid of that flame blade Adept, that's off the battlefield. Unfortunately for him, there is another one in hand, along with a Dranath Stinger that can just deal extra points of damage, and another Dranath Stinger drawn there for Javier Dominguez. Oh, hey, Zenith Flare. How you doing? Yeah, you actually see Javier go for a cycle before playing the Flame, at, Flame Blade Adept, as he's trying to figure out exactly what his turn is going to be before committing any mana. And yeah, continuing just to shake up his hand now with double Zenith Flare. <laughs> I, I don't think Piotr is long for this world, Ailey. No, I, I think his future is uh, bright and shiny and not in the way that he's hoping. Right, so we're gonna see a big old zenith flare come on down very shortly a 4-4 crisis not too shabby it does get pewter up to 15 life so double zenith flare for seven wouldn't do it unfortunately i don't think these zenith flares are going to get cast for seven. Oh no no we're we're going for max value here i i i am very much for this let's just keep cycling until the deck says stop you know Kind yeah, of like how some people play magic. I'm just going to play magic until someone says stop. And that's exactly what Javier is doing with these cyclers. Look at this. Up to oh. 11. Just keep cycling, cycling, cycling. And yep. Flameblade Adept has Menace. This Krasis is not getting a trade here. So <laughs> Javier is going to say, go ahead. Thought Erasure me. Oh, <laughs> you'll, you'll get the bad news. I want to see how quick it is between uh, Thought Erasing and Scooping from Piotr uh, I would say instantly. I Let's don't see. know if he'll actually go ahead and pick a Zenith Flare. Maybe he'll throw an emote out there. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. All right, bring in all the removal spells. Let's go. Okay, post board, Pewter again will get some better cards, but the big card that I continue to be scared of here from the mid range deck's point of view is hollow one it there's just not that many answers yes you can bounce it with a tyrant scorn yes you can discard it with a thought or hit it with a mortify but looking at this deck from pyotr there aren't that many answers to a hollow one and i think from javier's point of view it, it's really going to be just try to maintain the aggression just resolve a few creatures and get them yeah, basically just don't even care about what Blagowski is doing on his side of the battlefield. Just keep dumping threats down and then find your big old Zenith flares and wrap this game up. I, I do like the Forsake the Worldly that mm -hmm. Javier decided to bring in. It, 
again, just a normal cycling card in most cases, but being able to slow down the Niv deck by destroying their Cold Steel Heart is not irrelevant in this matchup. It just buys you time should the game work out in a way where that ends up being relevant. And I think it's a cool card to bring in from Javier's point of view there. Yeah, doesn't need it. Just send it away. All right, let's get into game number two here between our Mythic Champions. Javier Dominguez winning Mythic Championship 5, Piotr Glugowski winning Mythic Championship 7. So certainly no strangers to this level of competition. As we take a look at the opening hands, Thoughtseize, Cold Steel Heart, and two Nopes, not happy with that hand, sends it back. Yeah, no answer to a turn one creature, just not good enough from Piotr's point of view. So actually, Mulligan's a hand that otherwise would be extremely good, but... If you're not able to play Thoughtseize on turn one and your opponent just plays a fox, suddenly the hand looks horrendous. You're you're <laughs> not able to do anything. And I feel like that's the reason that we see Pewter actually lay it down. Cold Steel Heart drawn off the top here now, deliberating between taking two points of damage to dispatch the Cold Steel Heart or get down another one of these Triomes. Decides to go for the Triome and sends a turn back to Javier. Yeah, I feel like the deciding factor there for Pewter was the fact that he doesn't have another untapped land currently in his hand. So even if he takes the two damage from the tomb to play the heart, unless he draws an untapped land, he won't be able to play Binding the Old Gods next turn. Mm -hmm. Once that's the case, he can just play it safer, play the tap land, save the two points of life, and just try to play a, a bit of a patient game and hope he doesn't get run over by this fox. <laughs> Little Fox is going to get going very, very quickly here. As we'll see a Sacred Foundry shocked in, Forgotten Caves cycled. And here comes the Fox for three points of damage. Down to 17 goes Glugowski, who draws a Thought Erasure. Yeah, you That's do see bad. Javier not deploy a second Flourishing Fox there, as this is the turn where he wouldn't be able to grow one of them above a 3-3. If Pewter had a Deafening Clarion to deal with both those Foxes, Javier could have been in a lot of trouble. So instead, playing it safe, just getting the extra point of damage in, and saying, if you have a Deafening Clarion, all you're dealing with is one Fox and I have a replacement. If you don't, the beats are going to continue coming. <laughs> Another land drawn for Javier. Quite a lot of lands in hand. Luckily, though, some of them do cycle. They're yeah, still this, able to keep this fox growing. This is the massive advantage that the historic cycling deck has over the standard version. Standard Jeskai cycling only has access to triomes for cycling yeah. lands. This deck has two mana cycling lands. Triomes. It has the old onslaught lands that have been reprinted so just so many options so Piotr Lugowski is gonna get a breather here from the damage this fox has done is down to 11 and we uh also turn back to Javier Dominguez who finds a Dranath healer off the top of the library abandoned sarcophagus also picked up yeah, Abandoned Sarcophagus is an interesting sideboard card for these matchups as it essentially allows you to get double value from everything that you cycled already and grind later into the game when it comes to these mid-range matchups. But so far in this match, not really having any problem with the game getting to that point. Javier has just been able to consistently put up pressure, force Piotr to have these removal spells for these foxes, never even giving him a window to resolve niv -Mizzet. And now uh, Piotr has to make the choice of playing Binding there in order to uh, deal with the fox, but that means this Thought Erasure doesn't take the Zenith Flare that is in <laughs> Javier's hand, and that's just lethal. Oh my goodness. So Javier Dominguez cycles his way to victory in round six.